Let's use the first derivative test to find the relative extrema of the function f of x equals x squared minus 4 raised to the 2 thirds power on the real number line. The first thing we want to do is begin by finding our critical numbers, so we need the derivative. f prime of x, this is going to be a chain rule. We bring the 2 thirds power down, leave the inside function alone, reduce the power by 1. 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. And then from the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which would be times 2x. We can go ahead and simplify this, make it easier to work with. This would be equivalent to 4x divided by 3 times x squared minus 4 to the positive 1 third power. The next step is we want to go ahead and find our critical numbers. We'll first begin looking for the critical numbers where f prime of x is equal to 0. This occurs when 4x all divided by 3 times x squared minus 4 to the 1 third equals to 0. This is your classical kind of equation that has fractions in it. You'd want to multiply both sides by the denominator to clear those fractions. And this would produce 4x equals to 0. Divide both sides by 4, and we get one critical value is going to be x equals to 0. Because we do have a derivative that contains the variable in the denominator, we will get some places where the derivative will be undefined in this case. So where would f prime of x be undefined? Well, we're just going to take the denominator of our derivative. Set it equal to 0 and solve. Divide both sides by 3 first. We get x squared minus 4 to the 1 third power equals to 0. If you find it easier to work with it, you could also rewrite this as the cube root. But in order to get rid of a cube root or a 1 third power, essentially what we would want to do is raise both sides to the third power. So I'm going to cube both sides. The powers will cancel. We get x squared minus 4 equals to 0. This is a quadratic equation. You can either factor it. It's a difference of squares. Or because the x to the first power term is missing, you can use the square root property. Add 4 to both sides. And then take the square root. x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 4, which would be plus or minus 2. So we get three critical numbers all together. They are in order negative 2. 0, and positive 2. The next thing we're going to do is take these three critical numbers and plot them on a number line. So here's my number line right here. We have negative 2, 0, and positive 2. Those three numbers, when plotted on, on a number line, subdivide it up into four distinct regions. We are now going to take a test point in each region and test the sign of f prime of x. In region 1, maybe I'll use the test point negative 3. I'm going to evaluate f prime of negative 3. f prime of negative 3, this is going to be equal to 4 times negative 3 divided by 3 times negative 3 squared minus 4 to the 1 third power. This would be equal to negative 12 divided by, in the denominator I'm going to get 3 times negative 3 squared is positive 9, 9 minus 5, excuse me, 9 minus 4 is 5, and so this is going to be times 5 to the 1 third power. Okay. If you want to, you can certainly go ahead and, and punch this into a calculator. Remember, we don't really care so much about what the value is, we just need to determine the sign. If I look at this fraction, I have a negative divided by a positive, so I should produce a negative result. 
meaning that the derivative in the first region is going to be negative. So f prime is going to be less than zero, which means that in region one the graph is decreasing. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, region two. For my test point, I'll use, let's say, x equals negative one. f prime of negative one is equal to four times negative one divided by three times negative one squared minus four to the one third power. This is gonna be negative four divided by three times, negative one squared is positive one, positive one minus four is gonna be negative three. And let's take a look at what we have. Again, nothing wrong, you just go ahead, I would recommend most of you just throwing this into the calculator as a, a computation. Notice that the derivative is negative, it's gonna be the, the numerator is negative. The denominator, if you take the, the cube root of negative three, That'll be negative. Times it by positive three will still keep the denominator negative. So this value is gonna end up being a negative divided by a negative, which we know is, is positive. So in region two, f prime is gonna be greater than zero, which means that the function is gonna be increasing in that region. We have two more regions to check. Let's go ahead and take a look at region three and region four. For those of you that are really strong, extremely strong in your college algebra, one of the things you might be able to do to save some work on this sign test chart is if you actually look at the derivative itself, f prime is an odd function. And so in terms of computational, that will sometimes allow you to um, reduce your work a little bit here. Um, but let's just keep plugging along. In region three, I'm gonna use the test point positive one. If x equals positive one, then f prime of one is going to be four times one divided by three times one squared minus four to the one third power. This is gonna be positive four divided by three times negative three to the one third. The numerator is positive, the denominator will be negative, and a positive divided by a negative will be negative. So in region three, the derivative is negative, so it's less than zero, which means that the function is going to be decreasing in region three. What I meant by that comment about f prime being an odd function is, for example, if you looked at the, the value we would have gotten when we substituted in x equals to negative one, I didn't calculate it all the way out, but we saw that that value was uh, positive at x equals to negative one. Because this is an odd function, the value of f prime at positive one will have the opposite sign of the value at negative one. So that's the way that would have really quickly kind of told me that f prime of one would actually be less than zero in this case without any additional computation. We have one more interval to do. Let's take a look at uh, interval four. Let's use as a test point, let's say x equals uh, three would be our test point. f prime of three is equal to four times three divided by three times three squared minus four to the one third power and I'll leave that up to you to show that it's gonna be a positive value. The numerator will be positive, the denominator is positive. So in region four, f prime is positive, which means that the function is going to be increasing. From here, we can now go ahead and classify each one of our critical values. So at x equals to negative two, what was going on there? Well, the function went from decreasing to increasing, 
which means that's going to create a relative min. So at x equals to negative 2, if I can write the word at, there's going to be a relative minimum. To find the value of that relative min, we need to evaluate the function, the original function, f of negative 2, it's going to be equal to negative 2 squared minus 4 to the 2 thirds power, which will actually end up giving us a value of 0. So we get a relative minimum of 0 at x equals to negative 2. Let's look at what happens at our next critical value. At x equals to 0, let's see what's happening there. To the left of 0, it was increasing. To the right of 0, it's decreasing. And if the graph goes from increasing to decreasing, that's going to create a relative maximum. So at x equals to 0, we have a relative max. Let's go ahead and find the value of that relative max. f of 0 is equal to 0 squared minus 4 to the 2 thirds power. This is negative 4 to the 2 thirds, which is equivalent to the cube root of 4 squared, which is going to be the cube root of 16. So at x equals to 0, we have a relative maximum of cube root of 16. And then we have one more critical point to, to kind of um, summarize here. I'll put it up here. At x equals to 2, to the left of 2, the function was decreasing. To the right of 2, it's increasing. And if the graph goes from decreasing to increasing, that's going to create a relative minimum. So at x equals to 2, we have a relative minimum. And I'll let you go ahead and calculate this on your own, but f of 2 is not hard. Plug 2 into the function, this should also produce a value of 0. So we have a relative minimum of 0 at x equals to 2.